Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about five things that you should never do in a 4x4. And cool enough, I'm going to be in a different 4x4 either truck or SUV for each one of these. So the first point I want to talk about is going to be on pavement and then the rest of them are going to be off pavement. And so for this first one, I think most people know that if you use a locking differential for either the front or the rear, you shouldn't use that on dry pavement because the outside wheel going around a corner is going to be rotating fast. Uh, because it has to travel a further distance than the inside wheel and with a locking differential you bind that so that they can only rotate together at the same speed so best case you have a wheel scrub worst case you mess up your differential and drivetrain now similarly you're not going to want to use part-time four-wheel drive on pavement and the reason is just like that with a locking differential so by locking up the center differential or the transfer case which is sending power to the front and the rear it's going to be sending the same rpm to the front and the rear now when you're going around a corner the front tires are going to be going at a larger radius than the rear tires so what this means is that the front axle is going to be traveling a further distance than the rear axle. Now, if the front axle is traveling a further distance, it means it needs to have a higher RPM to compensate for that because it needs to rotate faster in order to travel the further distance. Well, if you lock that center differential, such as in a part-time four-wheel drive, where it's just a basic transfer case which splits power front and rear, then you don't allow for that slip. Now, full-time four-wheel drive vehicles can do this on the road because they have a center differential which allows for you to split the torque and split uh, the speed difference so that the front axle can rotate at a different speed than the rear axle, and you can use it on pavement. Now the other thing is on dry pavement you really don't need the additional traction of four wheel drive uh, so leaving it in rear wheel drive is fine even if it's raining it's typically fine you just don't want to floor it. Now the second one I want to talk about is you should never put it in four low while you're moving at speed with the transmission in gear. It should be in neutral and you should be at a stop. Uh, some vehicles will allow you to be up to two to three miles an hour but point is you should be going very slow and have the transmission in neutral. Now most vehicles are going to lock you out from doing this so that it's not possible anyways. But why would they do that? And so to understand that, you need to be able to understand the transfer case. And so what you have is you've got your output from your transmission going into your transfer case, and then you've got the output from the transfer case. So within that transfer case, you have a set of gears, a higher gear and a lower gear. So you use the low gear for the low range. Now, with that higher gear ratio of the low gear, what you're doing is you're multiplying that torque, essentially. So you're going to spin the engine, you know, more, uh, but it's going to give a better torque advantage uh, at the wheels. Now, why do you not want to put it, uh, why do you need to put it in neutral? Well, essentially what you're doing, it's like being in a manual transmission and trying to put it in gear without using the clutch. You've got an input on one end, which is from your transmission. So you put that in neutral, and now that input shaft uh, isn't running from your engine into it. Now, on the other hand, you have your output shaft of the transfer case going to the wheels. So you stop so that that comes to a stop. So now you have these two fixed input and output shafts going into the transfer case, and you switch over from the low gear to the high gear, or the high gear to the low gear, uh, simply by moving between them, because now they're both not moving. So there is no difference in speed. Now, if you're at a little bit of speed and the transmission's in neutral, you can mesh that together and spin up that transmission shaft, and it's no issue. That's why you can do it at about, you know, two to three miles an hour. But essentially, best case, you just want to come to a stop, put it in neutral, switch it over, let that change over gears. It works very similar to a manual transmission. You've got a collar that pops the gear out of the high gear range and puts it into the low gear range. The third one I want to talk about is not to floor it when you're trying to get unstuck. And this pretty much applies to all vehicles. This is something you've probably seen if you've ever gone to a beach where people can drive on the beach and you see some tourists that have clearly never done it before and they go out there in a front wheel drive minivan or something like that and they get stuck and they think, okay, well, I'll just floor it to get out of this. And then they end up just burying themselves. And this comes down to static versus kinetic friction. So really what you want is to have static friction uh, because the coefficient of friction uh, between two non-moving objects is always going to be greater than two moving objects. And there 
may be some crazy scenario out there where that's not true, but for the most part, the static coefficient of friction is always going to be higher. So what that means is, if your tire is slipping, the coefficient of friction is lower, and if the coefficient of friction is lower, the amount of torque that you're putting down is less. So always when you're trying to get out of a stuck situation, you should ease onto the throttle and slowly bring the car out because you're putting down the most possible torque. That's one of the benefits of these low range gears is that when you put it into this mode, you can put down a lot of torque and it gives you very sensitive throttle application so you can very slowly ease your way out. And you wanna do this in a smooth, slow motion. You don't wanna just floor it and give it a ton of throttle because you're not putting any of that power down. You're just wasting energy. And often you're probably gonna be burying yourself. Now the next one I want to get into is when you should be using traction control and when you maybe shouldn't be using traction control. Now some vehicles will have different modes that will alter this for you, uh, but if you don't have these modes, there's some definite do's and don'ts of when you should use traction control and when you shouldn't. So for example, let's say you're on packed snow or you're doing some rock crawling. Well with that you're going to want aggressive traction control so that you don't have any wheel slip because you're going to lose control. On the other hand, if you're driving through mud or sand, which you can get easily easily stuck in, you want to make sure that you can maintain momentum. So as you're traveling through it, if you have traction control enabled, what it'll do is it'll cut throttle when it sees you spinning, or let's say, for example, you get a little steering angle in there to correct it, it may, you know, kick in the stability in order to prevent your car from sliding out, when in reality that sliding is okay because you need to maintain momentum. So the big thing there is just with the, you know, the mud and the sand is that you constantly maintain momentum. You allow your wheels to spin uh, if they lose traction and you don't ever cut engine power because once you cut engine power, the whole vehicle slows down, then you're in the mud and it's much easier to get stuck once you come to a stop rather than just maintaining momentum and traveling through it. So good idea to use traction control when doing rock crawling or in the snow uh, most of the time. And then, you know, if you're in the sand or mud, it's a good idea to disable it to allow for some wheel slip and allow your engine to always provide full power depending on your throttle input rather than taking that away from you. And the final point, you want to make sure that if you have been off-roading, you never leave without actually inspecting your vehicle. Don't just drive home and assume everything's fine. Uh, it's, honestly, you really should, from a safety standpoint, check underneath the vehicle and inspect it before you head off. You want to completely inspect the underbody of the vehicle. You want to check the tires and make sure they're properly inflated and not damaged. You want to check for any visible body damage. You want to make sure the steering linkages and the suspension are properly intact. You want to make sure the exhaust system isn't damaged. You want to make sure there's not mud or debris covering the radiator to ensure your engine doesn't overheat. Eventually, you also want to be sure to check any threaded fasteners for looseness, anything used for securing the chassis, drivetrain, steering, or suspension. You also want to check for brush or any plants that might have gotten caught up in the vehicle. These could easily pose a fire risk if they get lodged near the exhaust. If the vehicle and steering are vibrating after driving from off-roading, there's probably something caught in the wheels creating an imbalance. Make sure the wheels are clean before driving off. Finally, it's a good idea to check the brake and fuel lines to make sure there are no leaks or ruptures, as well as removing any potentially abrasive materials which lodge themselves near the brake or fuel lines. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about five bad habits uh, that you may fall into driving a manual transmission vehicle. And the reason I'm making this video uh, is because, you know, behind the scenes there's a lot of things happening with a manual transmission that you may not be thinking about if you don't fully understand how they work. So we're going to get into these bad habits and talk about why exactly you may not want to do them. So the first one is you shouldn't rest your hand on the gear shift in a manual transmission vehicle. You shouldn't use it as a hand rest. 